Hello and welcome to the Under Center podcast. Welcome back for week two of the NFL preseason. This week I am joined once again by Rain, and we also have Al on the show with us, probably uh, to re- rebuke and rebuttal against the absolute slander that we did on the on the Seattle Seahawks without Dara and himself present. First of all, Rain, how are you this week? Is he gone? Can he hear us? Rain might be gone. He can't hear anything. Anyway, Al, while we're waiting for Rain to sort out his technical difficulties, uh, what are you, how are you, first of all, before you go on your rampage back at us? How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Glad to be uh, finally getting back into some NFL news and uh, I'm a bit behind on on it all, to be honest, but uh, it's good to finally have something because there was a few. There was about a month there where there was absolutely nothing, and it was shy. Yeah, look, we here on the show we were obviously focusing on uh, on the domestic league over here in the American football Ireland. We know a lot of our fans are based over in in America. Hopefully, they found that interesting. The the input that we had there. But obviously, we're back on the NFL. It's where this show cut its teeth, and we're happy to do it. As you said, it's quiet. It's going to be quiet for the next couple of weeks. And we let off the show, Al, last week, talking about some of these New Jerseys. It is something that happens around this time of year as the preseason games start to wind up. The teams are also finding a little bit of a struggle. There's not that much stuff to be able to show on their social medias or whatever. Uh, and so a lot of them begin to release these new alternative uniforms, sometimes uh, throwback uniforms, sometimes new away uniforms. Myself and Marine gave ourselves uh, gave our thoughts on it last week. The one we harped on about was the Seattle Seahawks. And I don't know if you got, I know you do listen back to the show, obviously, because we love to do a bit of quality control here on this show, making sure the quality is top notch every single week. But just to recap for our listeners, uh, myself and Rian raised an eyebrow because the Seattle Seahawks have not been the most successful team in the NFL by any stretch of the imagination. And so we just questioned this throwback 90s jersey what exactly was it throwing back to? And is it nothing more than a simple cash grab from an NFL team looking to generate a bit of hype and a bit of buzz during a pretty quiet off season? Al, the floor is yours. Please tell us how we're absolutely wrong, although I suspect you'll have some convincing <laughs> to do. All right. So, first of all, I never said um, we could all we could all tell that Russ was falling off. Never said that. We're all you know, rose-colored glasses, we wouldn't admit it. Everyone was making every other excuse. It was the offensive coordinator, offensive line, it was Pete Carroll, it was every other injury. It was never it was never Russ. So it took it took a while to take the, the rose-colored glasses off and uh and finally admit it. For me it was after he was traded. I was like, no, no, he's gonna be good. It's it's just injuries. It's just injuries. Um second, I mean they look good. Do you need any more reason than that? They look fine, Al. I would argue they look fine. They're not. They're better than particularly... fine. Don't don't let your Seahawks bias ruin them. They, they mean, they're better I'm... than fine. They're Go better ahead, than Ray. fine. I think if you take the helmet away, they're crap. But the helmet really brings them together. I like I like the helmet. The old skill helmet is nice. At the very least, what I will give them credit for is at least the throwback is a significant difference to. Uh, to the standard jersey nowadays there's a bit of a color change a bit of a color scheme alteration trouble it's not quite the cream skills of the tampa bay buccaneers that was rain's favorite gotta say it's pretty good that. for me i think the helmet needs a bit of work i know they're i know they're just completing the look and they're thrown back to the old style but i think they could have done something a bit cooler cream skull helmet maybe could have been a, an interesting com- combo go all kind of generally NFL color clash or whatever they were calling it there about five years back where every team was like neon colored. Maybe a full creamsicle Tampa Bay Buccaneer would be something to, to look out for. But yeah, I think anyway, Al, I have a question. It, like in all honesty, what is the throwback to? Is there something in the 90s so, in Seahawks lore that this is okay. uh, relating to or referring to? So uh, it's it's based around the last the last uniforms uh, that were worn before the full rebrand. 
um, to to what we know now, or well, mostly there was a couple of different iterations, and then uh, it's kind of a tribute to uh, the Kingdom, uh, which was the Seahawk Stadium for a long time up until the year two thousand, I think. Um, that was around the rebrand. That was the last uniform that they wore. Um, the blue uniform, silver helmet, blue face masks. Um, so that's kind of the '90s theme of it. Um, and it, there's there's a lot of references to the kingdom and in, in all the marketing. Um, and they have a little patch um, on the back of the neck uh, with a little kingdom um, image on it. So it's it's not it's not nothing. And uh, to your to your point about heritage, all right, let's let's go through a few of these teams. The the <laughs> Houston or Tennessee Oilers was it? There was Tennessee Oilers for a year, um, because the, they did a public vote uh, on the name, and that took a year. Um, so they're just kind of stealing Houston's uniform, aren't they? Yeah, well, um, the Vikings. I think for that, the Vikings. For that one, at least, at least with a throwback jersey for that one. I mean, Rain will agree, and Al, I think you agree as well. The Titans have missed on quite a lot of their uniforms since they rebranded themselves as the Titans. So, so, so at so, least, no, like, at least get the throwback wrong. gets them into better threads than what they're in at the moment. To be clear, before I continue, I love all the throwbacks. I think bright, solid colors. That's the way to go. Stop making them dark. Stop trying to make them just bright, solid colors. That's the way to go. That's why I love the Oregon uniform so much. Um, but yeah, like the Vikings. Yeah, they they wore that uniform and lost four Super Bowls. Good job. And they're <laughs> and kind also, of an historic also, franchise, though. Oh, they are hundred percent. But like, you know, losing four Super Bowls in them, throwing back to a bit of misery there. Um, and then the books. When do you think they were founded? Yeah, you're saying nope. like the Seahawks are a new are a new franchise. When do you think they were founded? They were founded honest. two months before the Seahawks in 1970. Yeah, exactly. Much older. Much older. <laughs> much older. <laughs> before the Seahawks were like same iteration as the 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 Jags, you know. But yeah. you so I I don't disagree that the books are nicer and all that stuff but yeah you're mostly wrong <laughs> well look lads we've managed to get about eight minutes of a show already <laughs> talking about a jersey situation that we talked on the week one so we better move on before dara cancels like, all our contracts any new fucking stuff or what <laughs> yeah we're taking phil into a, a whole new level uh i'm gonna transition as smoothly as i can you mentioned russell wilson at the start of your rant uh because you don't like any blame being placed on your shoulders for uh, for not noticing the clip was coming. But his new team, the Denver Broncos, they have got a new helmet. We're not going to talk about that. What they do have is a little bit of a coaching controversy over the last week. Sean Payton came out and absolutely buried the job that Nathaniel Hackett did last season. Now, could definitely argue that it's warranted that team certainly underperformed, albeit devastated by injuries. And Al, given that you weren't on the show last week, I'm going to start with you here. Is this Sean Payton, regardless of what he said, and we can talk about whether or not as a coach you should be commenting on the job that the other coach has done before you, but the reality is you're coming in with a still quite injured roster. They've lost another bucket load of wide receivers in the preseason. Russell Wilson underperformed last season. There's no getting away from that now. Whether you believe he's back on an upward trend or still going down, we can argue about that, but is this Sean Payton speaking a little bit too early before he knows whether he's got this team on the straight and narrow or not? I uh, I agree with the point Ray made uh, in the chat when we posted this. I think that's him trying to get ahead of of everything because he realizes that they're just not in the position that people think they are. And I agree. Like I'm, I don't know why people are so high on Sean Payton. Like he's been out for, um. What, two two years now um and like he was he's a good coach like he was good with the saints but yeah <laughs> he, also he had, had a hall of fame Brees quarterback in drew Brees. yeah exactly mm -hmm. so like i i just i think that that's him trying to get ahead of it and it's going to be so fucking embarrassing for him if they suck again if they get five wins again 
I think he should have just kept his mouth shut and uh, tried to get on with the situation. Hmm. Brian, exactly you said you, you need to you need to see improvement on this season. If there is absolutely no improvement, then you know that there is an issue at coaching, right? You've made this wholesale change with bringing in Sean Payton, and it really needs to at least generate some results because they can't be as bad or worse than under Nathaniel Hackett. Otherwise, it is an unmitigated shit show. Um, to be fair to him, he has redacted his statement now. He's retracted it and said, sorry, guys, I had my Fox hat on, my Fox Sports hat on at the time. Shouldn't have made a comment about a coach. Understandable. Um, maybe that was slightly down to the pressure he was seeing from the press, but still he has he has uh, apologized for his statement. Do you think then, I, I want to go into a little bit, as you were saying, like the the trying to get ahead of it. So do you think when he's making those comments and okay, you could argue maybe that the, the wording wasn't great. And as he said, he had his Fox analyst hat on, but if he'd have gone somewhere along the lines of, look, we've got a lot of work to do. I'm trying to bring in a new philosophy and not necessarily speak about the poor job that Hackett did and speak about all the work that he maybe kind of start making excuses as to why the improvement is as rapid as people suspect. Do you think that means that he is seeing improvement, that he does think the quality of the team there? Or is this standard coach rah-rah talk where he's like, no, I'm I'm a better coach, therefore even with the same panel of players, we're going to be better this year? Or do you think he's based on something he's already seen? I would, I would hope that he's basing it on something he's already seen. A, a guy who's been around the league that long should be long enough of the tooth to know uh, not to be big enough a team that is terrible, you know. It, he he should he should really stay away from the hyperbole. So maybe because he's making these comments, he genuinely is seeing an improvement. Now I can't see them getting a playoff berth or even close to that, but I probably do see them getting more than five wins this season, which will be. I suppose the start of a success, we'll have to see where that Sean Payton kind of legacy goes in Denver. Uh, I think two or three seasons down the line, then you need to start looking at playoff victories, uh, almost Super Bowls, because, you know, you're bringing in this coach, you you, you traded for him at the end of the day. So it's got to it's got to warrant results. Yeah, I think the metric for this team is going to be how much shite Russell Wilson stories come out during the season. I think that's going to be the barometer of how well it's going in the background. Last season, it was not going well, and we were hearing them warring up on airplanes and, like, I don't know, all, all the way up to nearly getting his team involved in, like, pyramid schemes, if it sounded like. He was absolutely a shit show, and all we heard was Russell Wilson stories. Uh, Al, they do play in an interesting twist. They do play the Jets. Nathaniel Hackett obviously was the coach of the Broncos last season. He did quite a poor job by all measures, uh, but he's not out of the league. They did get hired as the offensive coordinator for the Jets. How big is that game? Do you First of all, do you think he still has the qualities? Okay, he didn't make it as a head coach. Do you think he still has the qualities to be a top-notch offensive coordinator in this league? Um, I don't know. Um, it's hard to tell because he was, he was the offensive coordinator for uh, the Packers while... Uh, Aaron Rodgers got his two MVPs. So hard to tell if that was Aaron Rodgers because at that time he was very good. Last year is a different story. Um, I, I I don't know uh, about him this year. But um, are, are you saying that there's a cliff coming up like I did last week? Because I think there's maybe, a cliff coming up. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, ju- I don't know, uh, to be honest. Um, I think we'll just have to wait and see. Um, it's 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 hard to tell, but the 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 Jets, I will say, have a good offense. They have mm-hmm. a good base there for an offense. Um, you know, better than the receivers and tight ends that uh, Aaron Rodgers had last year in Green Bay. So definitely some potential there. I don't think Aaron Rodgers has it. I mean, he was bad last year. He was bad. You can make up all the excuses, but he was just as culpable as anyone else in that roster last year. So I don't think I don't think uh, the Jets do much. And with mm. the with the Broncos defense, um I'm not sold on their offense at all. But with the Broncos defense, uh I think they could win that game pretty easy. 
Rin, you agree? You think it's going to be tall? I would have said now, I have to say, on the given the rosters, and I'm less of a downer on Aaron Rodgers than Mr. Seahawks fan over here, but uh, uh, do you think do you think this could be a close game? Do you, do you even think it's an important game? Is this is this us in the media in general, both on this show and in the kind of the, the mainstream media? Is this us fishing for big storylines in the preseason? Or do you think this is genuinely going to be a bit of a grudge match once these two teams face in the regular season? It's going to be interesting. When does this match happen? Like, how? I think it's week five. I think I heard in the clip because I know uh, Nathaniel Hackett or some one of the one of the Jets coaching staff did mention when it is. I think it was that the head coach actually mentioned that. Oh, we don't even play them to week five, and we're already on their mind. Right. What I would say is quarterbacks who transition from team to team, particularly ones who have spent a long time in a system prior to moving generally tend to take a few weeks to get up to speed i think healthy confident in his rhythm aaron Rodgers plus that jets offense plus that okay jets defense is going to beat the the broncos 99 times out of 100 but because it's that early in the season because we're seeing aaron Rodgers come over from a system Uh, Now, I know Nathaniel Hackett is there and he's going to make that transition as smooth as possible, but he's still throwing to receivers that he's not fully confident of. And he's, yeah, he's just not going to be himself. I mean, we even saw it with Tom Brady, right? His start out with the Buccaneers was pretty rocky. Got it under control quite quickly towards the middle of the season, but still had a rocky start in those first few games. So, um, yeah, I think think the Broncos are delighted that it comes that quickly on the schedule. Uh, because later in the season, they, they don't have hope. Mm. And while we're on the subject, uh, Aaron Rodgers last few years has had a, a rocky off-season picking up storylines outside of football. He did generate a big storyline this off-season as well. He signed a, an extension with the Jets that's going to keep him there for three years, including this season. Uh, and he took a severe pay cut as well, I think $35 million pay cut. Uh, What did you make of that? Is that a good deal? We'll get to Al as well, because I know he has reservations about Aaron Rodgers, but what did you make of that deal? Is that a good, is that good for both sides? Do you think at this stage of Rodgers career? Yeah, I think it is. I think it, I think it represents kind of like a risk-free investment from the Jets. So because they're getting them at such a cheap price, I think they're, they're kind of getting, yeah, it's it's nearly risk free. Like if it doesn't work out, so what? Down the line, maybe in his in his third season, you can you can cut him or move him on or do something like that. But and it's not going to cost you the world. It's a totally situation, different situation to what the Broncos have in Russell Wilson, where they're locked in for the next five years. And I think it makes sense for Aaron Rodgers as well because he sees the quality of that roster. He knows that in a year, maybe two years, you are looking at genuine Super Bowl contenders if they do everything the right right way between now and then. So it makes sense for both. I just think as well, though, it's a kick in the teeth for the Packers. Uh, They've constantly been asking him to just, you know, take a team-friendly deal. He's never, ever done that. He's always, like, huffed and hawed and asked for trades and all this sort of thing. And at the end of the day, yeah, he's he's with the uh, the, the Jets a wet minute and ends up taking a pay cut. So, yeah, yeah, the Packers must not be too happy with that. Al, you, we talk about your reservations for, for Rodgers, and I guess that will feed into this question. But uh, a little bit, I guess, as Rain touched on, along the mold of Tom Brady taking that team-friendly deal, as he said, it, it extends him through three seasons while also opening up cap space. And I guess that's important for the Jets because if, as you say, he's, his standards are slowly diminishing or more maybe rapidly diminishing, as you would put it, uh, it's important to have as much quality around him so that he has to do the least, I guess, to keep this team humming. Do you think that's that's a good aspect to this deal, in your opinion? And just how much of a risk do you feel like the Jets are taking? Um. I think they could have enough to to keep them, you know, um, from completely stinking up the place. Um, I just even even with the pay cut, um, which I mean, I can't remember if it was over the two years or just one year. He was owed like one hundred and ten million dollars, um, which was insane. 
I mean, the Packers couldn't afford to do anything with that. They they had to get him to take a pay cut. Um, if if they really want to contend, he had to take a pay cut. Um, I think they had the talent there. I'm just not completely sold on Rodgers. As I said, he's 39. He's not going to get like substantially better. You know, the team is going to have to carry him rather than him having to carry the team. You know, he's not as fast. He's he's you know he's not as quick anymore to to process things. I don't think um, he's he's always been just real slow to trust if he doesn't trust his receivers, you know, that's why he's dragging Randall Cobb's corpse behind him uh, all the way to the jets. Cause he trusts them for some reason. He can't, you know, he can't really get the trust with the young guys. If he can't get that trust, then he doesn't throw it away or they're not on the same page. Cause he's thinking something else while the receivers running a certain route. So if it works out, if everyone's on the same page and Rogers plays even just good, I think they, they can absolutely make playoffs this year. Mm. I think their mm. team is good enough. I don't think they have an, you know, an amazing defense or anything, but it's good enough. And they have two uh, really good cornerbacks, uh, DJ Reed, who's a really, really underrated player. And as much as it pains me to admit it, uh, sauce Gardner uh, is very good. Um, yeah, like they have a good team. I think they can uh, go far, uh, but it really depends on how Rogers gels with the offense. Hmm. I think just as we come to to close the show, Alan, and knowing that we have you on, we didn't have you on. We when we talked a little bit about the Carolina Panthers quarterback situation, they're obviously the big money guys. We've talked about Aaron Rodgers a lot in this show, uh, and so while we have you on, I guess I want to I want to have a little chat about the the Seahawks QB room at the moment. It's it's always a topic of interest. You guys will have Geno Smith in there again. Talk to us a little bit. How do you feel? Do you think he's going to take a step forward? Does he need to? Do you feel like if you got the same production out of him as you did last year, you'd be pretty happy with that? And what does the room look like behind him? Who have you guys got in that quarterback room at the moment? And, and is there any changes that could possibly need to be made over the next season or two? Um. Oh, who else do we have? Uh, we have Drew Locke, so um, classic, yeah, not, fantastic. Not uh, not looking good behind him there. <laughs> I can't remember if we have a third. Uh, to be honest, uh, Holton Allers or something, undrafted free agent. I think that's our third. Um, yeah, I I think uh, if we can get the same play as last year, um, what they need is more consistency. We saw about halfway through the season, we saw a dip. Some of that's on Gino. A lot of that is on uh, the rest of the offense. We saw we had two rookie tackles about halfway through the season. You see with a lot of rookies, especially the big guys, you know, they're they're you know working on limited snap counts in college, so it, they're they're not used to playing you know the full you know starting season sixteen games. So you see them dip off a little bit halfway through the year, um, most part mostly anyway. Um, so there was certainly a bit of that. Um, and even at some of the more experienced positions, we had a bit of a turnaround on guard and center. So need definitely need a bit more consistency there. I think um, we will get that this year. Mm. And for the longest time, we've needed a third receiver. For the longest time, the fans and even some of the coaches and players have said, we've needed a third receiver. And it's just, it's never been there. And I think now JSN, um, who is quickly becoming a star of the camp, just fucking smoking the co- the cornerbacks. Um, he's uh, a lot quicker than his forty time suggests. Apparently, um, I think uh, this this offense can be really really good. Unfortunately, as is with every year, uh, we have injured running backs. <laughs> Kenneth Walker is dealing with a groin injury. And uh, Zach Charbonnet, our second round pick, has a shoulder injury and he's getting uh, second opinions on that. So we'll see. We'll see. Mm-hmm. I think um, I think Gino can improve. Um, will he? I don't know. I don't think he has to, to be honest. I think we can compete. I don't know. if It's certainly not going to be for a Super Bowl. Not this year. Mm-hmm. Too many holes. But I think we can you know, make a reasonable playoff run, even if he plays as good as he did last year. 
I guess then my follow-up question, and Rain, you can chip in as well after Al and let me know what you think. But they've got Geno Smith signed through 2026 through 2025, so he'd become a free agent in 2026. He's 32 years of age. Uh, what does that mean for the future? If you're saying you're looking at a good quarterback play, looking to make the playoffs this season and and build from there, where does it make you nervous at all about what the future of that? quarterback room looks like there's no young guy no young drafted guy if you continue to improve uh, it's not likely to get a, a fantastic draft pick on a kind of a narrower QB class so in your opinion where should the Seahawks go from now would you look to give Geno Smith another contract if his play continues to, to, to sustain at the same level or do you go and start looking somewhere else um I think you have to look somewhere else anyway regardless of if he if he's an all pro this year you have to look somewhere else he's 32 you know yeah Gino's not going to be your guy um for the next 10 years so you you, you know you have to find this guy I, I've, I've said this before in podcasts you know they're if Pete and John are looking at quarterbacks for the draft uh both this year and uh you know the years coming they're not doing their jobs mm-hmm. you know so they they have to be looking at quarterbacks. Um, Gino's contract is actually incredibly team friendly. If they cut him next year, they lose next to nothing. Uh, there's almost no dead dead cap space. So if they want to go and make a change, make a trade, draft someone, and get rid of Gino, absolutely no loss to them. Mm. Um, I think they've got a lot of flexibility there. Um, and you never know. Drew Locke might become uh like Gino, you know, have a career resurgence and stop throwing picks every other play. Rain, is there is there a danger of like Derek Carr syndrome here where you've got a quarterback who's good but not good enough and kind of the system gets scared to move on without without having a an incumbent in there? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think you are in that danger. I think he's the kind of guy who fits a system very well, learns, understands, seems to be incredibly intelligent and make good decisions out there on the field, but he's no Patrick Mahomes. If you get him off his position during a game, and we saw this time in, time out during the season last year, that if you can put him under pressure, he's going to end up making mistakes. And that's the unfortunate part of Geno Smith's game. If you can protect him, if you can keep him on a spot, he's the quarterback for you. He could take you to a Super Bowl. He's, He's that good. But I think they missed a trick, to be honest. I think... They're they're not going to be drafting as high as they were in the next few years because they seem to be on an upward trajectory. They missed out on Anthony Richardson. He is an uncut diamond, that guy. They could have drafted him at the position that they were drafting and they decided to go in a different direction. I think you cannot say no to having that talent in your building. Like Al said, a year from now, it costs them next to nothing to cut uh, Geno Smith from his contract. So why not leave Anthony Richardson behind Geno Smith to learn the NFL game? We know he only started 10 games in college and then make it a battle from the beginning of camp next season. I definitely think they missed a trick there. Hmm. Al, what do you think? Are you are you disappointed to miss out on some of the quarterback talent that was in the in the draft this year? No. No. Pretty, pretty um, <laughs> No. Um, I'm, I'm, like I'm I'm never sold on quarterbacks mm. coming out of the draft. They have all the potential in the world. Um, but we've seen time and again, first round pick, first round pick, first round pick, and they're just they're just not good. They don't work out. And for whatever reason that might be. If it's a player issue, if it's a coaching issue, or if it's a talent issue uh, around them. We've seen it time and again. Um, you know, these these uh players not working out. And then you know, he, he he gets a lot of hate, but, you know, you got your players like Dak and Kirk Cousins and Russell Wilson in your later rounds. You know, that can be serviceable quarterbacks and that have lasted longer in the league than a lot of first round picks. It's it's now you're better off taking a first round pick. You are you, like, I'm not saying just, you know, wait well, going to start rattling off names you can get. there. Yeah. Go Burrow. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's like, then you'll get your Joe Burrows and um you know it'll be absolutely worth it and your patrick mahomes will pick 10 for some reason um like you just never know like 
you you get Mitch Trubisky at the first pick, and then you get Patrick Mahomes at the tenth pick. Like, it's pretty clear that NFL teams have a really hard time evaluating um, quarterback talent and understanding how to, you know, coach them up and make them successful. Mm. Mm. we've seen time and again they'll fail so there's there's no sure thing there's no quarterback you can say like this guy is going to be good this guy is going to be an absolute like for sure all pro it all depends on the situation it all depends on the coaching it all depends on the player mm. you know Kyler Murray was going to be you know the next best thing and he's been awful I always had my doubts you can't put a four foot nothing quarterback in. I'm, I have my doubts about fucking Bryce Young now as well. He's just too short. Quick side note on the short thing. Um, what's his name? The Cowboys running back. Vaughn. Um, that's uh, outrageous. Funniest, I'm a, he's not going to make the actual, call. Actual Hobbit. Uh, it looks like an actual Hobbit running behind that line. Bit of a stocky Sorry, Hobbit. Take it off there for a second, but just have to... <laughs> so, he, he must wear like an XL helmet as well because it's so big it's on his so shoulders. Big. He looks like a toddler, man. It's goofy. Well, well look, that'll certainly give us a storyline to watch. It's definitely given the Cowboys media uh, stuff to put out during this slow off season or preseason. As we said at the top of the show, guys, this is the preseason. A little bit of a slow news uh, weeks and months maybe coming up as we gear up towards the preseason games. We'll have hard knocks coming out soon as well. If there is anything you guys would like us to tackle or questions that you have, feel free to let us know either here on YouTube or on any of the shows, shows social media. You can catch this podcast on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts. Just search under Center Podcast. You can find us on Instagram at under Center Pod. You can find us on whatever the hell Twitter is called this week at under center pod as well uh, and of course here on youtube please do like and subscribe it really helps us out uh, and of course as i mentioned let us know anything you want us to tackle from the lads rain al thank you very much for joining me this week thanks for having me on good to uh, good to be talking nfl again exactly Finally. and hopefully we'll have you on for a few more weeks as well al as your schedule clears up a little bit Uh, So that's all from us. Thank you very much for listening and we'll see you again soon.